Good day, this is Ray. Today is Saturday, February 4th, 2023. For me, another day of social distancing. Hope that you, your family, friends, and loved ones are doing well, staying safe. Uh, it's a, kind of a chilly morning. Uh, I didn't see what the temperature was outside, but I did look outside and see my car is covered in frost. I was just really checking to see if my car is still out there because I don't do much driving these days. Uh, except for this week. And I'll give you sort of a brief recap of this week before I talk about what I'm going to talk about. So uh, I worked Monday and Tuesday. I took Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off because I was uh, taking my exam for my career designation, the first class out of five. And the first exam out of five. And it's a 10-week uh, course. Uh, it took about three, four weeks before taking this exam after the course had ended all the reading 43 chapters uh, practice quizzes practice exams and I walked in there confident that I was going to fail it I'm a terrible test taker not going to lie even though I've been you know taking exams pretty much all my life especially since college and into a career Walked in there, I'm double masked, I'm always masked when I go out, I'm immunocompromised, if you haven't seen my previous stories, I have lupus, and um, got, you know, situated, had to put my stuff in the locker, hang up my coat, uh, sat down in front of the computer, I was actually the only one in the room, uh, it was really quiet, and uh, first 50 questions, I breezed through those, I was like, man, this test is going to be super easy if I can, you know, if all the questions are going to be like this. And then the last half was like a, a choice between uh, four different options. So, for example, they asked you a question, and then they gave you two options. And then you get four multiple choice questions. Is it one only? Is it two only? Is it one and two? Or is it neither one and two? So, when it got to that part, I just started laughing and uh, you know abacadabra it's kind of guess my way through the second half of the exam yeah, yeah you know I, I tried it if if I have to if I didn't pass it uh, then I'll have to retake it and that's a 125 bucks that I don't want to spend on retaking it but uh, if I passed it which the, the exam itself is part of the coursework, so it's, it's graded. I'm not sure how that all works. I'm still waiting for the results of that. Uh, when I finish up, it's at pending, so I'm waiting up to find out what's going on with that. But anyway, uh, I hate taking exams. I really can't be. I can't wait to be done with this. You know, hopefully, I get this designation this year, and um, and I may pursue one more next year if that happens i'm just a crazy person but we shall see all right so what i want to talk about today and i'm you know i'm still continuing on this path of budgeting i I had no idea that budgeting would become a passion of mine but it is It, it is something that has you know sort of revived me uh after being diagnosed with lupus in may of 2019 i just it felt listless, didn't know exactly what I wanted to do in life. And uh, I, I knew that I wasn't going to, you know, just stop and uh, let this completely wreck my life. Even though there were times where it felt like, I, you know, I, there, there was nothing of value I could bring. But as of late, I really, really... Um, have a passion for budgeting and talking about budgeting and hopefully uh, being of help in my community, you know, whoever was watching his videos and uh, ultimately, you know, teach this. But, you know, one of the biggest things about um, changing a lifestyle as something that's talked about a lot is, is FOMO. If you hadn't heard of that, acronym it means uh, fear of missing out that's definitely you know something i would say was the early challenge of mine but it's not so much anymore like you know for example i gotta have the newest car gotta you know look at my neighbors they have a bigger home than me they got a, a bigger backyard 
you know, you got all these streaming services with a new TV shows out and, you know, you see it on TV or in advertisements and you're like, man, I should get Disney plus Hulu plus prime plus HBO plus Showtime plus whatever plus there is out there. You know, I got to have it. And then there is, you know, going to a new restaurant. There's this new restaurant down the street. Everybody's talking about, I want to go to it. It's so hype. And, you know, it's, it's just something I, I got to be a part of, or, you know, maybe traveling for you. Um, I definitely, you know, would like to travel again someday. My ideal vacation would be go to, to go to the Montreal Jazz Festival that I've known about for 20 plus years, but had been able to um, to go. As a matter of fact, uh, my passport's expired, so in order for me to go, I have to get that update. Now, I think a passport now is like 120 bucks, or maybe even higher than that, uh, for all I know. You know, new gadgets, you missing out on those, uh, the newest cell phone coming out, and all that stuff and uh, new clothes. I, I pretty much cycle the same clothes week to week. I haven't bought new clothes, new clothes in a minute. Or it could be, uh, you know, Taylor Swift tickets and now Beyonce tickets, concert tickets. I see people are taking uh, are doing GoFundMe's to get concert tickets. So you know, I'm sharing my consumer debt payoff journey. And this is definitely not the easiest thing to do. You know, I'm being very vulnerable where when I started tracking my debt, I was almost at 100000 of consumer debt, which I'm sure I did have before I actually started tracking month to month. And now I'm down to 66000 within a period of two years. And a homeowner um, as of last year. So, oh, and I make less than six figures. I didn't get any help on buying a home. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, this, <laughs> this all happened because of, uh, because of budgeting. And, you know, strict budgeting. If, if I had a fear of uh, missing out on FOMO, it, this one wouldn't be possible at all because I would, I would always, you know, want to have those things, but I don't want a new car. I'm not interested in getting a bigger home and a, and a yard. I'm not getting all the streaming services for the new shows that are out. You know, I don't have expensive cable. Um, I'm not traveling, but you know, for reasons that I'm immunocompromised, which now that I think about it, it's saving me a lot of money. And it's helping me to pay down my consumer debt. I'm, I'm not getting the newest gadgets, not getting the new phones. Of course, I'm not buying clothes. I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, but I'm not, you know, seeking out those tickets. I'm not a Beyonce fan, really. And I'm a jazz, a jazz musician. I'm, you know, if, if there was a, you know, a Cold Train back playing, or maybe uh, if, if, you know, Herbie Hancock was in town. Yeah, I'll go. On. I would want to see it, but you know, if it's out of my budget, I am not going to pay for it. So I don't have a fear of missing out anymore. And I, I look at it this way: so budgeting has really helped me. And I was thinking about it this morning. Budgeting is it's almost like uh, having guardrails when you're driving on a steep mountain. I lived out west, and I remember you know driving on those steep mountains and. There were some some parts of the mountain road where there were no guardrails. You could just see down the cliffs on both sides, and you know, I was scared out of my mind. Um, <laughs> you know, just thinking about that. But you know, budgeting is almost like having those guardrails is keeping you from going off the cliff. And the cliff, in this case, is spending and going into considerable debt. I'm very, you know, fortunate that I'm strict about sticking and budgeting. And not everybody's going to go down this path. I, I wish that more people did, but it's a very small percentage of people that that are good budgeters, strict budgeters, people that you know really want to get out of the consumer buying pattern. You know, I, I have um, I've learned a lot. I'm still learning. I still have a ways to go. You know. 
97,000 compared to 66,000 is, <laughs> yeah, it seems like I had a, a very long way to go, but now I'm at 66,000. It seems like a long way, but you know, that's more progress than I could have ever expected. Um, if, and if I weren't doing it the right way, this wouldn't be possible. And I say the right way is that because I haven't, uh, because I have a budget, I'm organized with my finances. I'm working on getting my emergency fund back, and then I can accelerate my debt pay down after I pay off my consumer debt, build up a complete emergency fund. After I get that emergency fund, focus on paying off my mortgage early. Excuse <coughs> me. And then, uh, you know, focus on retirement. And the one thing I don't talk about, but I do, is I budget for helping people. So I do have a small budget for being able to uh, help people financially in a, in a way that I can. It's, it's not much, but I definitely do keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, this is how I'm going to live the rest of my life. I'm not going backwards. Okay, if you made it this far, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. You know, when I post my videos. And I will see you soon. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care.